In today's reading of Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh, we continue with Book 1, Laying the Foundation. This is Chapter 3, Last and Fifth Section, How to View Time, Space and the Script. Hi, David. I would very much like to know what you think about this. The Course says that we are at the end looking back. I have been thinking about this a lot. It seems that if you follow this to its obvious conclusion, then we would have no way to change anything we are experiencing in the dream. It would simply appear to continue to happen because it has already happened. We will only choose to view it through the ego or through Holy Spirit. The more we choose the Holy Spirit, true perception, the more we wake up. My friend thinks that since all possible scripts have been written and happened simultaneously, then each time we make a choice, we experience life differently. We are not writing a new script, but simply exercising the already written script that applies to our most recent decision. In that way, we do affect how our script plays out. The Course does mention all dimensions of time. There is a reason I care about this answer. It is just not idle curiosity. I was always afraid to fly, and though I do it, I would take a tranquilizer or have a drink to calm my nerves. Once I realized that everything has already happened and I am just viewing it, I started concentrating on seeing it through the Holy Spirit. I found that I am no longer afraid to fly. In fact, I find this view very comforting. The alternative view would be a little different, but fine too. I am just saying that I really have a reason for wanting to know. I try not to get too much in my head and to concentrate mostly on the experience. But some things if I have some sort of understanding, are helpful to me. What do you think about this? Beloved one, thanks for the thoughtful question and wonderful witness to the healing power of the Holy Spirit. The present is before time was. To mind asleep, this blazing light has been completely pushed out of awareness with the dream of time and space. Your question is very practical, for it asks for the helpful view of time from the Holy Spirit's perspective. In reality, there is no time-space. Practically speaking, time-space lasted but a seeming instant and was simultaneously corrected, healed by the Holy Spirit. Only via the ego does this unreal instant seem to be repeated over and over and over again, making a ghost or illusion of linear time-space, which has been called the script. The phrase 
the script is written emphasizes that the dream of the world was over long ago. Time, practically speaking, is over and gone and in reality never happened. Experiencing time as simultaneous is the decision to see that cause and effect are together, not separate, and that there is no world apart from mind or apart from what you think. In simultaneity, there is no duality, no past and future, no inner and outer, and no subject and object. You wrote about the dream. It would simply appear to continue to happen because it has already happened, and we will only choose to view it through the ego or through the Holy Spirit. The more we choose the Holy Spirit through perception, the more we wake up. This is an accurate description of the seeming process, although it must eventually be realized that the decision is without exception and therefore beyond the belief in degree, that is, more or less. Salvation is no compromise of any kind. This applies to the release of the error of linear time-space. Atonement entails the realization that linear time-space cannot be changed because linear time-space is an illusion. And illusion, being false, cannot change. Your experience seems to change from the ego's ever-changing uncertainty to the Holy Spirit's tranquil and certain and stable perspective. Peaceful perspective is a choice, a decision, an acceptance, and this happy dream of non-judgment is the goal to which ACIM points. In happiness, simply review what has already gone by and make no attempt to change or fix or rearrange the images of the script. Seek not to change the dream. Seek rather to change your mind about the dream. This is the meaning of the phrase, I need do nothing. Text chapter 18, section 7. Remember these happy passages from ACIM. Therefore, seek not to change the world, but choose to change your mind about the world. Text chapter 21, Introduction Time is a trick, a sleight of hand, a vast illusion in which figures come and go, as if by magic. Yet there is a plan behind appearances that does not change. The script is written. When experience will come to end, your doubting has been set. For we but see the journey from the point at which it ended. Looking back on it, imagining, we make it once again. Reviewing mentally what has gone by. Workbook Lesson 158 Let me recognize my problems have been solved. I seem to have problems only because 
I am misusing time. I believe that the problem comes first and time must elapse before it can be worked out. I do not see the problem and the answer as simultaneous in their occurrence. That is because I do not yet realize that God has placed the answer together with the problem so that they cannot be separated by time. The Holy Spirit will teach me this if I will let him. And I will understand it is impossible that I could have a problem which has not been solved already. Workbook Lesson 90 The unforgiven is a voice that calls from out a past forevermore gone by. And everything that points to it as real is but a wish that what is gone could be made real again and seen as here and now in place of what is really now and here. Is this a hindrance to the truth the past is gone and cannot be returned to you? And do you want that fearful instant kept when heaven seemed to disappear and God was fear feared and made a symbol of your hate? Text chapter 26, section 5 Forget the time of terror that has been so long ago corrected and undone. Can sin withstand the will of God? Can it be up to you to see the past and put it in the present? You cannot go back. And everything that points the way in the direction of the past but sets you on a mission whose accomplishment can only be real, unreal. And everything that points the way in the direction of the past but sets you on a mission whose accomplishment can only be unreal. Such is the justice your all-loving Father has ensured must come to you. And from your own unfairness to yourself has he protected you. You cannot lose your way because there is no way but his and nowhere can you go except to him. Text chapter 26, section 5. Would God allow his son to lose his way along a road long since a memory of time gone by? This course will teach you only what is now, a dreadful instant in a distant past, now perfectly corrected, is of no concern nor value. Let the dead and gone be peacefully forgotten. Resurrection has come to take its place. And now you are a part of resurrection, not of death. No past illusions have the power to keep you in a place of death. A vault God's Son entered an instant to be instantly restored unto his Father's perfect love. And how can he be kept in chains long since removed and gone forever from his mind? Text chapter 26, section 5 From the Rules for Decision section 
We said you can begin a happy day with the determination not to make decisions by yourself. This seems to be a real decision in itself. And yet, you cannot make decisions by yourself. The only question really is with what you choose to make them. That is really all. The first rule, then, is not coercion, but a simple statement of a simple fact. You will not make decisions by yourself whatever you decide, for they are made with idols or with God. And you ask help of Antichrist or Christ, and which you choose will join with you and tell you what to do. Text, chapter 30, section 1. Your day is not at random. It is set by what you choose to live it with. And how the friend whose counsel you have sought perceives your happiness. You always ask advice before you can decide on anything. Let this be understood, and you can see there cannot be coercion here, nor grounds for opposition that you may be free. There is no freedom from what must occur. And if you think there is, you must be wrong. Text chapter 30, section 1. The second rule as well is but a fact, for you and your adviser must agree on what you want before it can occur. It is but this agreement that permits all things to happen. Nothing can be caused without some form of union, be it with a dream of judgment or the voice for God. Decisions cause results because they are not made in isolation. They are made by you and your advisor, for yourself and for the world as well. The day you want your offer to the world, for it will be what you have asked for, and will reinforce the rule of your advisor in the world. Whose kingdom is the world for you today? What kind of day will you decide to have? Text chapter 30, section 1.